I am bringing you my controversial top 10 squats of all time. Now, these won't be the heaviest squats of all time, although some of them are. But to me, these are the most impressive squats for various different reasons. Let's get stuck straight in. I love squatting. I think squatting is one of the most underappreciated movements in the gym. And if I had to recommend one movement for someone to get good at, to be overall strong, it would be squats. We're talking benefit for deadlift, overhead press, et cetera, et cetera. I've released a 100% free guide to squatting, which is down in the description and in the pinned comment. Without further ado, let's get to it with number 10. Now, this isn't one of the heaviest squats of all time. It's actually nowhere even close, but it's probably the reason a lot of us started squatting in the first place. And this is Ronnie Coleman's 800 pounder, 363 kilo by two squat. He did this at 135 kilo or 298 kilo pound body weight. These were smooth reps. There wasn't even a pause between the first rep and the second rep, which is pretty crazy. He did it in single ply in reps, which it definitely takes away from how much strength is actually required to do this. But one of the most iconic quotes of all time, he was asked if he had any regrets from his career. And this is after his body has, has deteriorated. And he said, I think, uh, I think I could have done more than, than two squats. I've got a few left in the tank on that squat set. Uh, which is absurd that that is his number one regret. Now, he filmed this in around 2000. It was for a, a DVD, which was funny. Only 24 years ago, that was the primary way of consuming people's training content is putting it on DVDs. And now we put it out to you the next day on YouTube. That's number nine. Sorry, that's number 10. On to number nine. This is, I believe, the real world's strongest man. I'm going to do a totally separate video on that. But it's a guy named Joe Kovacs. And he is an American shot putter. He just won silver in Paris. He's won silver at the Olympics three times now. He's won world championships, and he, he's a shot putter. Part of why this is so impressive is because squatting isn't one of his core competencies. He's, he's a thrower. He's an Olympian. And he squatted 870 pounds or 394 kilos for four reps just in sleeves. And when you watch this video, he's not doing it like a power lifter. It's high bar. He sort of takes two quick steps out and goes straight into it. Almost like you would see someone squatting 315 for the first time at the gym. Very nonchalant, very casual, and absolutely insane. Now, this video is from part of a training cycle that was three years back, although I've seen similar stuff to date. Again, I'm going to make a video on this guy because he is an absolute animal. He's also bench pressed 350 kilos for a double. To add to all of this, as an Olympian, you must meet water criteria. He'll get drug tested all the time. So drug tested... Doing something like this is absolutely absurd. Now, for number eight, we're going to switch from super heavy squats to really insane squat volume. And I'm sure you guys know who I'm going to talk about. It's the iconic Tom Platt's 525 pound or 238 kilo for 23 reps. He did this at 108 kilo or 238 pounds body weight. And this was part of a contest he had with Dr. Fred Hatfield, where Dr. Hatfield squatted over 800 for a max and Tom Platt squatted 600, and then he challenged Hatfield to a 525 squat for reps. And uh, somehow, he had a 600 max squat and did 525 for 23. I, might, I think he might have been sandbagging the max reps, but Tom Platt's was known for some insane volume and some crazy, crazy loads. This held as a record for a very long time until yours truly beat that two years ago. If you want to check out that video, check it out up there. But these were astagrass squats. These were high bar squats. They were, were done in a single ply, which is definitely, again, takes away from the impressiveness of it. But between the depth, his body weight, and the volume, this, for me, has to be on the top 10 list. And number seven is the heaviest squat ever done. Now, I'll tell you why it's not number one, but this is a 1,306-pound squat, or 592 kilos. Really hard to even comprehend that, that much weight squishing down onto your spine and this was done by brian carroll he did this at 137 kilos or 303 pounds body weight the reason it's the heaviest squat and it's only number seven is because it was done in multiply equipment there are some questions with multiply that i have i don't understand the depth that these guys are required to get to because it's it's nowhere near a raw depth nowhere near an ipf style depth and um, we're probably three inches above parallel that being said if you can even get 592 kilos on your back and you can even bend your knee to some extent and set up to some extent, which Brian obviously did, that is immense and deserves to be on this list. This was done at a UPA meet in Utah 
in 2021. Moving on to number six. This is a man named Tyler Butcher. Tyler is a single ply power lifter, which is less supportive than multi ply equipped. So less weight than Brian, but he did 1152 or 522 kilo squat. The reason that this is so impressive, even though there is one squat heavier in single ply, he did 100, uh, he did this at 156 kilo or 344 pound body weight, which is 50 to 100 pounds less than all of the other guys with maximum weights on this lift, on this list. So he did this in single ply. Depth was definitely, I don't understand depth in equipped powerlifting. It looked high to me regardless. He got the good call from the referees. He bent his knees. He creased his hips. The elements of a good squat in his federation were there. This was an IPA meet in 2024. Absolutely insane. Now, the next one on the list, number five, also happened in 2024. And this is going from the equip side all the way over to the now raw and drug tested side. This is Jesus Olivieris. And he squatted 1,054 pounds or 478 kilos at a body weight of 412 pounds or 187 kilos. He did this at the IPF Sheffield. Now, IPF is one of the most stringent organizations in terms of judging depth, in terms of drug testing. There's no wraps on the knees. It's just sleeves, one belt, how much can you lift? And he did an insane, insane 478 kilos. Depth, no problem. He, walk, he had to walk it out as well. There was no monolift. So up, a couple of steps back, then squat, and then walk it back in. Uh, and to me... This looks like a really, really good solid lift. But there are four others on this list ahead of him. And in number four, I have one of the best powerlifters of all time, Dan Bell, with a 1,113 pound squat or 505 kilo squat at 175 kilos or 386 pounds body weight. For context, 505 is the maximum ever multiply equipped deadlift record. So the heaviest squats are actually heavier than the heaviest deadlifts. I'm particularly impressed with this squat by Dan because his depth is really good. He was using uh, sleeves, so sleeves, but no supportive suit. And he had his feet quite narrow. Oftentimes, powerlifters at a high level will go very, very wide with toes out, which decreases the range and makes it uh, makes the range shorter, so it's easier to lift heavier weight. This was not the case at all with Dan. He had very narrow feet, slightly turned out, very deep squat. He did this at the US, the current US Open in 2021. And there are no questions to me about the legitimacy of this lift, about the depth of this lift, about the call. This was part of a full powerlifting meet, and he got off to a really hot start. In number three, we have the heaviest raw plus wrap squat of all time. So now this is the heaviest squat without a supportive squat suit on. This is Vladislav Alasov. Not sure if I'm saying that right, but he did. 1,157 pounds or 525 kilos at 394 pounds or 179 kilos body weight. Like I said, heaviest raw plus wraps squat of all time. Done at the Grand Prix Adrenaline in 2018. He only did the squat where other guys in this list went on to do other lifts as well. But that much load on your back with no suit on, I could not imagine the amount of pressure he was feeling through his spine. His head would have felt like it was going to pop off. And this lift was really solid. Again, I don't know about the depth. I'm not a powerlifting judge. The judge is there. He said good depth from their angle. A successful lift at 525 kilos. Absurd. But not as absurd as my final two. Number two is a man who got me into powerlifting in the first place, who I admired. He was the first real big name that I admired in strength sports. And this is Ray Williams. Now, Ray was an IPF lifter, so drug testing, colossal man. He had a body weight of 420 pounds or 190 kilos when he did a lift of 1,080 pounds or 490 kilos raw. Sleeves. Sleeves, belt, that's it. Just like you would see people in your gym. Now, what's most impressive to me about this, why it's risen all the way up to number two over these other squats, he sinks the squat pretty well. But the first three quarters of the squat, he absolutely explodes out of the hole like there's no weight on his back at all. I would not be surprised at any number that came out of the maximum amounts of power he could generate in the bottom of a squat. And of course, he had to walk it out. Of course, he had to hit IPF, 
IPF depth, uh, and strung testing. So this is absolutely blows my mind. If we compare his 490 kilo squat to Dan Bell's 505 kilo squat, it's only a 15 kilo difference going from tested to untested and sleeves to wraps. I can attest that wraps add somewhere between 25 and 50 kilos onto your squat. That alone would have Ray Williams up in the best raw plus wrap squat conversation of all time. Never mind being able to take any sort of substances on top of that. Ray absolutely blows my mind. And to me, he is the strongest raw squatter to ever exist. Jesus very well could get there in a short period of time. But that just leaves us number one. And number one is impressive beyond belief. This is all the way back in 2001, WPC Florida. This is a single ply lift by one of the best powerlifters and probably the best powerlifter of all time, Ed Cohen. And I think pound for pound, the strongest squatter of all time, I wouldn't put a question on that. At 170 kilo, 107 kilos of body weight or 237 pounds, he squatted 471 kilos or 1,038 pounds. Now this was in single ply. Even still, we look at the best single ply lift ever at 522 kilos. This was done by a man who was 344 pounds. Now, like I said, that is on the list because of the pound for pound impressiveness. There's one guy much larger who squatted marginally more, but we're talking 1,052 to 1,038. A 14 pound difference in load and a 50 kilo difference, a 105 pound difference in body weight. Not only that, but this was done in 2001. 23 years ago, Ed Cohen managed to pull this off. The advancements in wrap quality, the advancements in suit quality would have this lift in excess of that for sure. How much, we don't know, but could it be greater than 1152? I think so. I couldn't find a video of this lift itself. It is recorded on open powerlifting as an official lift, but I've included instead a video of a 423 kilo squat at under 100 kilo body weight, which again is absolutely absurd and unfathomable by who I believe is the best pound for pound squatter of all time. I would love to know your guys' thoughts. Go ahead, pop that in the comments. My measly 880 pound squat right now, we're nowhere close to getting onto this list but maybe one day I'll crack it. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. As per usual, lift heavy, be kind. Check out my free guide to squatting. If you want to get the most got the most out of your squats moving forward, 100% free. That link is in the description and in the pinned comment. Thank you very much for watching. As per usual, lift heavy, be kind, and we'll catch you in the next video.